You guys, we're up to $100 in donations. Thanks again to everyone who's already subscribed. For those of you that are new, by the way, every new subscriber up to 1000 is $1 towards a local homeless shelter in Seattle. Again, I appreciate the support. Let's get into the video. At 5-3, and three, we were not guaranteed a bowl game. Even though we had lost two of our last three games, we needed to finish the season strong. We were not going to go down that road of spiraling into a, just a ton of losses. We had a tough game against SMU ahead. We did nothing offensively in the first quarter. And we've been having some slow starts the past few weeks against teams like Central and South Florida. It was another game where we had big plays offensively, but we couldn't capitalize once we got into the red zone. We decided to go for it on fourth, and I feel like the read options are really easy ways to at least pick up two yards. We got some great lead blocks on the outside, and I took it all the way for our first touchdown. Of course, when we score, SMU's got to score too. So we're still down three when I made an insane touch pass over the top to Marshawn Ford, who caught it over four defenders. Amari Huggins Bruce ran a great post, getting wide open in zone coverage. We found ourselves in the red zone again and I ran it myself for a second rushing touchdown of the game. To start the third, SMU scored another touchdown. I let us down the field again with some pinpoint passes. I still remember when people said I couldn't make these kinds of throws. Hudson got wide open on the slant. Nobody can stay with him man on man. Finally, our defense got a stop. I was trying to keep my eyes downfield on most of my scrambles, and I almost took a sack because of it, but I think that the weight that I put on in the summer must have helped me get a little bit stronger. I stayed upright and juked a few defenders. I would have taken it all the way, but my foot just barely touched the sideline. They got pressure on third down and knocked the ball away before it could hit D-Wiggins, so we settled for three, and SMU came down and tied it up. I stayed poised in the pocket and made my progressions, looking at the first, second, and third options. I was starting to actually develop some patience. I didn't feel the constant need to run outside of the pocket and break out of my three and seven step drops. Sure, coach was still running some design rollouts, but I felt like I was playing more within the structure of the offense. And then I got lit up on an option play. I thought I still had some time to lateral to Jawar Jordan, but I got hit so hard, I just dropped the ball and SMU recovered it and left us with just one minute to tie it up. Again, man, it felt like the offense was clicking across the board, whether it was the passing game, the running game, or my scrambles. We got down to their 40 yard line and they dropped back into cover three. I like to attack the single high safety with our four vertical routes. The safety faced the right side, so I looked left and found our fastest dude on on the team wide open and he did the rest. We ended up winning 31 to 27 and we had another test against number 14 Rutgers up next. Rutgers had only one loss this season. We were playing really well in offense but sometimes fluky stuff happens. Jawar fumbled on a big hit and luckily they only got three points from it. Some mock drafts already had come out at this point in the season, and some of my teammates were projected to be drafted. Specifically, Marshawn Ford, my tight end, was supposed to go in the top three rounds somewhere. Tyler Hudson was also a late-round wide receiver, and so was D. Wiggins. Jawar Jordan may enter the draft after his junior year, or he might stay and play his senior year at Louisville. I think we can raise all of their draft stocks if we continue to pick up Ws, which is obvious, but as long as we get a solid bowl game, that will help as well. If I'm being honest, Marshawn Ford is definitely the X factor of this offense, and then it's probably Amari Huggins Bruce, the junior wide receiver. I think D and Tyler Hudson have a chance to be drafted, but I don't think they really have the athleticism or the production that will make them stand out at the combine or during the draft process. But we'll just have to wait and see. It was tied near the end of the first quarter, and we were driving down the field. Wiggins ran a great corner route, but it was just short, making it fourth and inch and coach put in the field goal team and ran a fake field goal that got us a touchdown. Up by one, Marshawn absolutely killed this DB on this double move, faking outside, coming back inside for the easy touchdown. Rutgers was able to score and make the two-point conversion, so we had 50 seconds to get in position for a field goal that hopefully our kicker can actually make. The dude consistently misses from 30, so I don't know. I dot Amari over the middle and put us in position for an easy field goal. He does end up nailing the 15-yarder, though, with two seconds remaining, and we pull off the huge upset, and just like that, we're fighting for a really solid bowl game, and we're back in the top 25 conversation. Our last game of the season came against Memphis. We were playing at home, so this was basically senior night, a final send-off to all the graduating players on the team. You know we couldn't finish the season at home with an L after two huge ranked wins. Melton ran a great out route and picked up a huge first down on third. Marshawn Ford got in for his first touchdown. You might be curious if we have a backup tight end that's solid, and Des Melton is definitely going to step in at tight end, and he won't be as good as Ford, but he will be a really good receiving tight end. He's actually faster than Ford and more of a route runner too. Coach added lots of design rollouts in this game, and for my second touchdown, I found none other than Des Melton on this beautiful drop-in touch pass. At some point, if you look at my progression as a passer going back to my senior year at Blanchett, you'll see how many more throws I can make. I used to be able to make wide open throws to receivers on slants, curls, and out routes, but now I'm able to fit balls into really tight windows. I can really squeeze them in, and my receivers have gotten really good at locating these balls and grabbing them out of the air. Aside from Des Melton, two huge pieces of the offense next year are going to be number one, obviously Amari Huggins-Bruce, and number two, Chris Bell. So Chris Bell is shaping up to be an even better receiver than D. Wiggins or Tyler Hudson. He's a little bit more athletic, and overall he's a more technical receiver with great hands and a solid route tree. 
Up two scores, I had all day on this play to run, but I stayed patient and waited for linebackers to swarm me. Once they did, Amari was wide open and brought it in for a nice catch going down near the 30 yard line. Memphis did make some respectable plays on defense in the red zone on this drive, stopping me from scrambling pretty consistently. I expected zone coverage on second down, but I still expected my receivers to find dead spots in the zone, but nothing was really open. On third down, we were supposed to run a wide receiver screen, but they played man and the DB was all over my wide out. I didn't want to throw it away and just give up on the play, but I also wasn't throwing a pick. We had a solid lead over Memphis, and we had gotten better lately at holding onto these leads, reducing turnovers, and continuing to run the clock. Some of that stuff killed us earlier in the season. We finished this season with three losses inside the top 25, and now we had to wait to find out who we were playing in our bowl game.